Um, so I thought I'd take a little more controversial viewpoint on the challenges facing us with IPv6 and DNSSEC. And I think it's really business-related issues as opposed to technology, and that's why I've labeled this talk uh, Dead Men Walking. Uh, if we don't do something soon, I think the uh, future for both of these protocols is uh, very much in doubt. And I think uh, Joe's talk beforehand, I think, point out some very important directions that we just, as technologists, cannot throw a technology out there and expect people to take it up. We have to involve our community. Uh, we have to help uh, various user groups and really develop the business case uh, for these technologies. Uh, so the IPv6 challenge, we've gone over that. It's, you know, it's, it's been around for a decade. I remember my first uh, IETF conference back in 92, and uh, everybody's then uh, lamenting the demise of IPv4 address space. We had to do something urgently, and we still seem to be talking about that. Uh, it, you know, it, it is deployed on many backbone networks, uh, dual stack, that's pretty common, but very little in the uh, retail space or access to the home. Uh, the default choice, we don't do something about IPv6 is carrier-grade NATs. And if you talk to the vendors and the carriers, the big guys, they're not so, uh, uh, you know, this is not such a bad idea for them, at least from a business case. Equipment manufacturers, this means much bigger and more complex routers. And for the carriers, hey, you know, we can take, make things that are difficult even more challenging. And uh, that just limits competition. So that's the challenge we face if we don't deploy this technology. We'll lose the end-to-end -end principle. And for us that are passionate about the internet, uh, this I think is a very, very important thing. So I argue that we have to look beyond the technology. We have to look for new business models if we have any hope for this technology to succeed. So one example, I've been working uh, with some clients in Europe, particularly SurfNet, which is the research and education network in the Netherlands. And they've really been looking at this problem as well and are undertaking a new pilot to really help propel the adoption and deployment of IPv6. Because they recognize that we don't do something, particularly in the leading edge adoption community, universities and research networks, then it's, if you can't make it work there, it's not going to work anywhere. So they just signed a deal with KPN, which is the uh, incumbent telephone company in the Netherlands. Well, they'll be deploying the world's first, what's called uh, enterprise-centric deployment of LTE and a mobile network. Now, this is a new architecture for a wireless network. It's the recognition that more and more data travels over the network, it's not as much as the old voice architecture of sending up telephone calls. A lot of the data is hosted locally, a lot of the data is based at the universities and so forth. So you're building this network, this 4G network, uh, using only IPv6. It's going to be IPv6 native only, not even supporting IPv4, but to allow all the people with the iPads and iPhones and so forth access to uh, all the data and so forth at the universities. How they're paying for this is a unique arrangement. KPN is, of course, running out of address space. So SurfNet is leasing their slash eight, a spare slash eight they have to KPN. They're not selling it, but they're leasing it. And there's some complex stuff there I won't get into and some politics. But uh, this is a neat, uh, very uh, novel business arrangement so that both parties can learn from deploying this new data network really for the students at uh, all the universities. And what's going to feature is something called Edge of Rome. If you're not familiar with that, that's a roaming protocol developed by our universities allows you to go to any institution around the world. You don't have to sign in. You're automatically uh, logged in uh, based on your home institution's credentials. That's a PKI architecture, and it's now going to be used for wireless. So any of you who are fed up with your roaming charges when you go outside of Canada or anywhere you travel, that disappears with this type of architecture. And so it's good. hopefully what they want to use is the chain of trust in DNSSEC, by the way. So this is going to be quite neat to see if they can make that work. And things like Dane will really help in that regard. Other pilots are also underway with our university and education community, particularly in Australia and UK. I'll be going there in a couple of weeks to help them with their pilot, uh, trying to do the same thing, to really let's push IPv6 in this new marketplace. Trying to go back to the legacy marketplace of uh, PCs and so forth is much harder. But this new marketplace, as Paul mentioned, more, many of our devices are already IPv6 enabled. It's very simple, it's seamless, it's uh, invisible to the user. This is where we've got to start, and this is where we can hopefully make it a much better business case. Um, but again, also IPv6, uh, there's some challenges there. One of the things we were learning from the Akamai studies and from other studies out there is that most traffic is not end-to-end. -end. Most of it terminates on a local CDN network, content distribution network like Akamai or Limelight, or it terminates in the cloud and so forth, and that's increasing significantly. And now about 45 to 50% of traffic terminates in such uh, services, and in some of our research and education networks, we're seeing up to 90% of our traffic is terminating locally and not going end-to-end. -end. And that's starting to get people to rethink about the whole principle and architecture of the network. 
And so some people are saying numeric addressing, IPv6, is already an activism. It's based on a presumption because routers could only handle, in their forwarding tables, very simple numeric lookup tables that couldn't handle complex alphanumeric strings. So there's a number of alternatives being looked at that in replacement or as a supplement IPv6. One's uh, uh, named data networking. If, I don't know if you've seen the uh, uh, Van Jacobsen uh, uh, video YouTube on Google. It's a great talk about this and this challenge we face. And rather than trying to secure the network or secure the DNS, let's secure the actual data itself is an important part of that concept. The other one, of course, is Vint Search to uh, delay polar network, uh, which is late binding of DNS and XML routing. And then, of course, there's a lot of uh, the, uh, in the uh, data centers, a lot of XML routing and addressing. And some people are talking that as a possible alternative in the wide area. So there's two other things we can do. First, let's keep working on IPv6, but time is running out. And God forbid we have to end up in the world of carrier grade NATs, but I really fear that's where things are going. The vendors want it, the carriers want it. And even though they don't say so, that's, it's in their both in their interests. And I think we've got to fight hard. And if we don't get to succeed with IPv6, we've got to be thinking of some alternatives. DNSSEC, well, that's a concern. We heard about the poor take-up rate and so forth. And again, to us techies, it seems obvious. You know, we're hearing these poison caches. Uh, you know, why are people alarmed? Why are people getting their own sign? Um, you know, what's the problem here? And again, I think it's the same problem. The people, that, you know, at the roots are in the CCLDs or TTLDs are saying, okay, my sign is delegated, it's your problem. And I think we really, again, have to say, no, we have to be much more proactive if we want this to happen, because it's good for the whole community. If we get this global PKI, all the types of applications that can be enabled, I think will be very exciting. And I think this Edge of Rome, which I talked about, is a great example of that. Uh, and this is why we've got to explain that business case. The NSSEC is a lot more than just about uh, signing and delegating your zone. It's about new opportunities for distributing data and new applications and so forth. And so again, uh, uh, SurfNet is uh, uh, with one of my clients are uh, doing work in this area. They realize that many universities, particularly DNS now management, like, like email management, is becoming a bigger challenge. You know, we say about signing your zone, you, know, you just say sign. But if anybody has dealt with certification authorities and getting certs and so forth, it's a pain in the neck. And so uh, a lot of this institutions say we don't have the scales, we're downsizing. And so what SurfNet is doing is says, OK, let's outsource that. We will manage your DNS domain. We will provide secondary. We'll do all these things for you. We'll manage your DNS set. We'll manage your cache and so forth. Let's make this a business proposition that makes life easier for you. And particularly as you roll the new applications for uh, Dane and so forth, uh, then we can look after that as well. And so it's a revenue opportunity for them, and I think this is also for registrars, ISPs, and so forth. This is an opportunity here in Canada to start thinking about this way. Rather than waiting on your customer to sign and delegate their zone, why don't you offer, say, here, we'll do the service on your behalf. Many of you already offer in DNS management. Here's an opportunity to expand upon that. And so, uh, again, there's still some challenges. Yes, uh, just a simple thing, even for the SurfNet, you know, here's the Netherlands. I've been doing this for some time, yet there's some restrictions imposed because Sidon, which is their uh, main name registrar for uh, .nl, does not yet have an automated process uh, for accepting the secure delegations. So simple things like this can really hold up a process. It's understanding these business processes, which I think are very important uh, for their adoption. So IPv6 and DNSSEC is hard and costly for your customers. These are technologies that right now are, don't seem to provide any a benefit other than securing things or extending the namespace. So it really seems more benefit to your ISP than the customer themselves. And we've got to change that perception. And so uh, we need to promote these technologies. We have to be much more proactive with registries and registrars and ISPs, working with clients, trying on things out, having pilots, and new business models, particularly I think in the wireless space, is going to be very important. That's the hot new market. That's where the growth of uh, the end user devices is going to be the iPhones and iPads and so forth. That's where we've got to move quickly and grab that market, make it V6 native only, make it DNSSEC from day one, uh, rather than uh, trying to you know, work with all these legacy systems. And I think uh, university and R&E markets are a prime example. We've got to get them involved. We have some very good technical people at these institutions, and I think they're keen and have a mandate to really work with ISPs, registries, and registrars on getting this rolled out. Thank you.